Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Welcome to the Thrift Flip Road Trip. And we'll talk more about that a little later on. So we're going to do some DIY rustic home decor today. I got this wooden carrier or holder, I don't know, several years ago for a couple dollars at a Goodwill. And I want to do something a little different with it today. I'm going to use my stain mixture that I made up and put it all over this box. It is a mixture of antique wax with some water and a little bit of black paint to make it a nice dark stain. But it also, when I wipe it back, it gives it a nice black look on spots as well from the paint. I'm going to take this piece of cardboard and put it inside because I want to put white on the front but I don't want it to drip down between those cracks and go down inside the box. So I just put that there to keep it from making a mess. So I'm just doing a nice coat on there. It's it's I'm going to make sure that it's fully coated on there but then I'm going to turn around and sand it back. I want this to have a distressed rustic look on it. So I'm sanding in between the cracks that are there and or the spaces and around the edges. I have this tissue paper that's an ad. It's got a bunch of ads on it and I've been pulling off it and taking the ads that I want. The one I want of course is in the middle of the paper for this box. This paper I got at a place called Zazzle. I will put a link down in the description below. You can check it out. They have some good deals and sales if you sign up. So I'm just cutting it down a little bit and taking the excess paper off so that uh, it will fit in between the two lines on that big middle, uh, middle wooden spot. That fits just right. So now I'm going to take a little bit of Mod Podge and wipe that on the back of it very gently because this is tissue paper and it's very thin. Uh, it doesn't take much to rip it, especially once it is wet. So I'm just very carefully moving it around and then I'm going to put it on here and make sure that it is mostly no wrinkles, but it's okay if it has a few wrinkles. Once it's down nice and uh, secure, I got this edge here that I didn't do so that I could handle it without making a mess. I'm going to go over it with a coat of Mod Podge over the top and just over the paper just to make sure all the edges will stay down nicely. So again, I'm taking my antique wax mixture and I am uh, just wiping that brush off so there's very little bit on there and going across the top to give it a distressed aged look over the whole thing. And of course also kind of sealing it in. I let that dry for a couple minutes, just very short. Uh, so that it would most of it would stay on, but then I pulled some of it back so that it wasn't too too dark. I have this uh, lace ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. There's a few different colors. I got a brown and this light cream color, and I kind of like this cream color the best. It didn't take away from the front of the box, so I just wrapped it around and put a little knot on there, and this box is done. On to project number two, I have this really cute little white, oh, jar, I guess it is, that I got for a dollar at Goodwill. And that was pretty recent. It wasn't too long ago. Now I have this little wooden, I think it was a, a candle holder if you flip it up the other way. And I ended up using the cup for something else. 
And so I had this left and I said, geez, I wonder if this fits on the top as like a lid. And it does. Fits perfect. So I took one of my beads and a little bit of my clay and filled in the hole of the bead on the top. Let it dry for a minute and just kind of sanded it down. And I glued it onto the top of this lid and then painted it with my antique wax mixture. Now I'm going to take a little piece from this ad again. I cut out this little picture and I cut it as close to the picture as possible and I'm going to add some Mod Podge again being very gentle because again this is tissue paper and it rips really easily especially once it's wet. So I am putting this on the front of this cute little jar and we're going to see how this comes out. Moving on to project number three, I have this cup or half a cup of coffee that ended up having grounds in it the other day and I saved it to do some coffee staining on this piece of drop cloth. I want this to be a little bit yellowed and aged so I just poured it into this glass so that you could see it and I'm just dunking it in. You can see that the grounds are in there too and I am just letting it sit for a little bit. So while I do that, I have this really cool basket that I found that I got for, I think, $2 at Goodwill recently. Now I'm going to mix up some of this mixture for you. I'm pretty much out. I have about a quarter of a jug of this antique wax. So I'm going to pour it into my cottage cheese bin. That's what I'm using because I like the nice wide mouth. And I'm taking about a quarter cup of water and pouring it in there. And I'm going to shake it around to get any excess of that antique wax out. And I'm going to pour that in and mix that in with the antique wax that I have in there already. So you want to make it to what you like if you wanted to make this. Now this is folk art black paint. And I'm taking probably, I would say, it's about a tablespoon. Again, make it how you like it. If you don't want it that dark, don't put as much black in it. But I just love how some of this will stay in. The black will stay down in some of the crevices, and some of it will stay stained. And I'll show you that in this basket as I wipe it, put it on, and wipe it back. You'll see what I'm talking about, I hope. So I'm just wiping this all over the basket. I'm going in both directions with this because, as you know, the weave, you just don't hit it all in one direction. You have to kind of go in all the directions to hit all the weave. So this just goes on, and then I just wipe it back. There's no wait time. I just wipe it right back. And as you can see there, the difference. And you can see some spots where it's really dark and other spots where it's lighter and more of just the stain sitting on the wood. That's the part that I like. I just love it. It's just so, it just is so random and varying, and I think that's why I like it. I have a hard time sometimes being random, so if I could get the paint and stain to work together and be random for me, I think that's great. So I have this big roll of uh, burlap that I got for $4, I think, at Goodwill recently and I thought that this would be great to put on the inside of the basket because I don't want to have to stain it. It's really the last thing that I want to do is stick my hand in there and, and get the stain everywhere. And I wanted to cover up the inside. I think it gives it a more finished look also. So I'm going to just lay it down and 
along the edges. I'm going to hot glue and put the edge of the burlap on there and then stuff it in so there's a nice finished edge around the top. Now some of the spots don't get totally glued in so I just go back through and put a little glue and fold it right back in there and it gives it a really nice finished look on the top. There we go. I think that looks so nice. So now I'm taking my almost dry drop cloth along with another piece of that ad from that tissue paper. I am loving this right now. This is the first time I really use this stuff like this. I usually use wallpaper and things like that, but we're going to try something different. So I'm taking some of my Mod Podge and I am basically painting it on to this piece of drop cloth. And painting the whole thing all over right to the edges. And then I'm going to take this tissue paper and I'm putting it on the top of the drop cloth. And then I'm going to repaint basically the Mod Podge right over the top. And again, being kind of gentle with it because as it gets wet, it gets very, wants to rip and very uh, delicate. I wanted to tell you about these T-Mash uh, kitchen rugs or anti-fatigue kitchen mats. I use this uh, underneath where I work all the time. I'm always standing when I'm doing my crafts. Not always, but a lot of the times. And this seems to help a lot with my leg and back pain from bending over and standing up to do my crafts all the time. Uh, these are anti-fatigue non-slip. They're stain resistant, easy to clean. They have a memory foam and they are an excellent size. There's two sizes, a 17 by 30 and a 17 by 47. Now I have the 17 by 47 under where I work and the smaller one I have in front of my sink underneath my scatter rug. These are nice and thick. They're really great. They're cushiony and I really enjoy working on these a lot more in doing my crafts seem to help with the pain, like I said, in my feet and my legs and my back when I'm standing and doing stuff all the time. Don't pay any attention to my awesome attire while I'm cleaning up my craft area, but I am loving the mat and I wanted to share it with you. These come in several different colors, so you can get one to match your color scheme, and I know you will enjoy them. The one that I have is in black. There will be a link down in the description if you're interested in purchasing from Amazon. Now that it's dry, look at that. It's very pliable. It actually molds very well. It is a little stiffer, but it works really well. So what I'm going to do is glue it to the front of this basket. And I just love this basket. It came out, I think it came out so awesome. And it totally changed this basket from just a plain old weird colored basket to this antiqued, aged, old looking basket that I really would love to have in my home. So this is a Thrift Flip Road Trip Collaboration Challenge. And I will have the links to the channels that have put this challenge on, along with the playlist of the other awesome creators that have joined this collaboration down in the description. So if you don't know, I live in Maine, and my husband and I live off-grid, and we have chickens and a bunny and a dog and about 12 acres where we garden and just harvest our own firewood and uh, we do our thing out here in the woods. I added my antique wax mixture to the front of the label and I am now taking it back just to give it a little antiqued old look and here's how it came out. Hope you liked my thrift flips today. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite. 
If you would like to see any more of the thrift flips, I'll put a link right here for you to check those out. And don't forget to go down and check out the host to the collaboration and also the playlist down in the description below. Thanks for watching.